Alright guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be talking about a topic that has been long coming. It is finally E3 time again. It is like Christmas season for people who love video games and specifically for people who love Nintendo games because I think we're going to be seeing some big reveals this year. Next month is E3, Nintendo's Direct is probably going to come in the last day or so of E3, so we're going to have a lot of stuff to be talking about in the next coming weeks. But I wanted to start with a little early speculation video. With that being said, let's jump right into things. Now there are a lot of kind of like floating question marks in Nintendo's arsenal of releases this year. There's a lot of stuff that we know about, and then there's a lot of stuff that we know exists and we don't exactly have timetables on releases and that's something that I think E3 could shed a little light on. Now I want to hit Pokemon first because obviously that's what most of my viewers are here for. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl do not yet have a firm release date. We know it's coming at the end of the year and we also know that Legends Arceus is coming at the beginning of next year. My mark has been March if it is coming out on release which I have doubts about. But let's go to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I think Around E3 time, we're going to get a new trailer. Not going to say if it's going to be in Nintendo's presentation because the Pokemon company sometimes likes to do things a little bit differently, do things their way. But I think we're going to get an October release for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And the reason that I say this is because I think they want to provide a little bit of space between Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus. I could see November, I could, but if we're getting a game in March, I would think they would want to give as much time in between those two releases as humanly possible so it sells. They said late 2021 for uh, the release. I think they want to get it out before Black Friday, obviously. I think they want to get it out before the holidays. And I don't think they're going to put it out in November because I think there's going to be another big hitting Nintendo title coming out in that month. So I think October is going to end up being the release for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and I think we will get a brand new trailer to boot. Will we see a ton in that trailer? That remains to be seen. I don't, we really don't have a firm grasp yet on how Game Freak is going to be handling this hype cycle for these two games. We got both announced at once, and they're both coming out relatively close to one another, at least as of now. So the amount of trailers we see for BDSP compared to the trailers we see for Legends is going to be interesting. It's going to be really fascinating to see how they end up deciding to grapple with this topic and how they decide to show us news and information as we get closer to the release. Now, before we get into the predictions for the rest of Nintendo's lineup, I just had to point this out. The vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them are actually subscribed to the channel. Now, we've been growing really fast over the last couple months, and I only have you guys to thank for it. But if you enjoy the content and you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to hit that button. It supports me, helps support new videos coming out, and shows that you guys are really excited for this Pokemon content and this Nintendo content moving forward. The biggest thing that it seems like a lot of Nintendo fans are patiently waiting for from this Nintendo Direct come E3 time is any bit of news, any bit of information on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. We got this game announced almost two years ago now. We know it exists. We know it's coming. We've gotten slight updates from Eiji Aonuma and some of the other guys at Nintendo in the recent months about they need a little more time. And we have seen some leaks recently also go into detail about how the COVID-19 pandemic really screwed up development. Now, we don't know if those sources are true, and we don't know if those reports are accurate, but I would have to assume, considering how much of an impact COVID had across the entire gaming industry, that a game as massive, a project as much of an undertaking as Breath of the Wild 2 must be, probably took a hit from it. With that being said, I think we're going to see Breath of the Wild 2 at E3. Not necessarily sure if we're going to see a release date. I think that's pretty dependent on when we eventually see the Switch Pro or the Switch 2 or the new beefier version of the Nintendo Switch get announced if we do see it. If we see it get announced for a holiday release, maybe Breath of the Wild 2 comes out with that. If we see it release around that same March time frame next year as the original Switch came out under, maybe we see Breath of the Wild as a quote unquote launch title for that month window as well. There's a lot of questions. I think it'll get a name at the very least. I think we're going to see a big blowout trailer for Breath of the Wild 2 showing us what we're in for, and we're going to get a name, and it will not be Breath of the Wild 2. It could be something of the wild, or it could be completely different. That's pretty much where my head is at with that. 
And I think it's going to have some changes. I think we're largely going to see the same world, the same Hyrule as in Breath of the Wild, but I think we're going to see underground features. I think we're going to see underwater features and diving make an appearance. And we're just going to see an expansion of the terrain that we already have available to us from the original, just mightily improved and some mechanics tweaked to make the gameplay experience that much better. Now, the next thing I think we're going to see is we're going to see something out of left field. My hope would be something akin to Super Mario Sluggers, some Nintendo Party game, some sports title that we haven't seen in a long time. Now, we already have Mario Golf coming out in June, but that's a June game. We just got a couple days ago a massive trailer posted onto their social media, and that generally tells me we're not going to see a ton of it at E3. We're probably going to see a mini trailer saying this game is out in a couple weeks, be sure to check it out, but they're not going to waste a lot of space with that trailer. This is why we're getting this now. Nintendo got it out of the way. I want to see them revive an old sports franchise, and the two that deserve to be revived, in my opinion, is either Super Mario Sluggers, which is baseball, or Super Mario Sluggers, or Super Mario Strikers, which is soccer. There is a left field option, and it's a Mario basketball game. Something we've never seen before. It would be a really cool new thing for the Switch. I think it's possible. I would love to see another sports title, even with golf coming. I think it's possible that within the next year and a half, we're going to see another sports title because the Switch is perfect to bring back so many of these sports Mario franchises that we haven't seen since the Wii U and the GameCube era. I think it would be fantastic. With that being said, there's also the big elephant in the room. It's, it's a twofer. It's Zelda's, it's a big Zelda anniversary this year. I believe it's the 35th anniversary, maybe the 40th, of the Legend of Zelda franchise. And as of now, all we have is Skyward Sword coming out in July. Now, it doesn't take a lot to know we're probably going to get another trailer for Skyward Sword at E3. It'll probably be a smaller thing, similar to the Mario Golf saying this is coming, pre-orders are available, custom Joy-Cons are available, maybe a custom Switch Lite, something to that effect. We're going to see that again. But we still need to know, do Nintendo, does Nintendo have any big plans for this year with Zelda? With as big as Zelda was, and considering how they went sort of all out for Mario's 35th anniversary last year, you would have to imagine that maybe we're going to see some ports or some eShop, some quote-unquote eShop versions of some older Zelda games. Maybe we see Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask brought over to Switch. Maybe we see Twilight Princess brought over to Switch. Maybe they give us what we've been asking for for a while, and this is my official prediction for this. I think we're going to see Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD brought to the Nintendo Switch, and they're going to be brought to the Switch in October or September. They're going to stagnate these Zelda releases, because you would have to imagine, if Breath of the Wild 2 is not happening, they're going to supplement Zelda's 35th anniversary with something bigger later in the year. And I think taking those two Wii U ports, which were some of the most successful games on the Wii U, and bringing them over to Switch for an audience that maybe never got to play them, I mean, I'm one of the people who's never played either. With that being said, we're going to get more Zelda. We're going to see something else. It's just a matter of when, not if. Zelda's 35. It's a huge anniversary. The next thing, Bayonetta 3. I think it's time. I think we're finally going to see it. It's been three to four years since we've gotten the original release for Bayonetta, or the original reveal for Bayonetta 3. We've seen no gameplay. We've only seen teases. Every time one of these big events comes around, all of the predictors talk about, oh, this is going to be the time we see Bayonetta 3. This is going to be the time we see it. When are we going to see it? We're running out of time. This game was announced close to when the Switch was originally revealed and shown off, like in January of 2017 at their big blowout event. We've seen nothing from it. We've, we've, we literally have a logo. We have a logo and a teaser trailer. Now is the time to see Bayonetta 3. This is another game that I would have to imagine was probably impacted by the pandemic last year. Maybe if we had had a normal year and a normal cycle, we would have seen something then, but we've been waiting so long for this. The next game that we've been waiting on for a while, and I think we're going to be waiting on until next year, is Metroid Prime 4. I'd be stunned if we see anything for Metroid Prime 4 this year. I think that is a, uh, a E3 2022 game. We're going to see it revealed next year. I don't think we're going to see a peep about Metroid Prime 4 in this Direct. Is there a chance that we could see another 2D Metroid? Maybe give Mercury Steam another uh, old Metroid game to port to the Switch? Or, if it was up to me, give Mercury Steam a... Give them the ability to make a new 2D Metroid and bring it to the Switch. They did a fantastic job with Metroid Samus Returns on the 3DS, which came out right at the end of the 3DS's life cycle. 
Give them another 2D game. They understand 2D Metroid. They understand what it takes to make it run on more modern hardware. I would give them another game. And honestly, I'd give them their own game. I don't want them touching an old Metroid game. I think we need to see a new edition. I'd mention the Metroid Prime trilogy here, but it's it's like asking for Mother 3. Like, I, it just feels as if we're never going to get it. It's something that if it happens, it happens. I still believe they're going to want to put it out right before Metroid Prime 4 comes out. So whatever year Prime 4 eventually comes to us, I think in that same year you'll see the Prime trilogy get brought to Switch. It would catch a lot of players up. Metroid games historically don't sell incredibly well. So bringing that trilogy over as it was, it was on the Wii U, it was on the Wii. I have it on the Wii U, but I'd love to have it on my Switch. I think that would be a good way to introduce new players to this game and get them ready for Metroid Prime 4 as the 4 title makes it seem like it's going to be some sort of continuation on the Switch. Now, there's other things we're definitely going to see. We're going to see a Smash character. We still have two roster spots in the second DLC pack to get announced. If it was up to me, I'd want to go crazy here. I would want to roll out both fighters. I'd want one to be a June release instant with E3. Give us a demo afterwards in the Treehouse section. And then I'd reveal the next one for a September release and round out Smash Brothers in that way. I would want to release them both, create as much hype as possible. Given that Nintendo has taken a long time with their directs, we've only gotten one earlier in the year, and before that, there was over a year's drought from the last real, legit, non-specific direct. I think they want to give us as much as possible. And I think this is where we could see both Smash Fighters revealed, and I think it would be a good way to handle it. As you've seen from most of my predictions, I think Nintendo is poised to have a pretty big E3. I'm not confident that we're going to see the Switch Pro or the Switch 2 or anything of that sort get announced, but I think we're going to see a lot of their big games revealed here. We're going to get a really good look at what the rest of 2021 is going to look like, and frankly, I think it's going to end up being a pretty busy year. Now, with that being said, in this video, I'm only scratching the surface. We're going to have a couple more videos coming out between now and E3, where I'm going to go into some detail on some of these specifics. I only wanted to hit the surface level stuff because so much of Nintendo is incredibly hard to predict, and if I get into specific niche game titles like we're going to see a return we're going to see a new donkey kong 3d open world game or something of the sort i think we might be going crazy a mario kart 9 which is never going to happen considering how well mario kart 8 is selling and then there's the obvious very basic stuff that everyone predicts every time this is when we're finally going to see the mario kart 8 dlc this is when we're finally going to see the super mario odyssey dlc Guys, I think it's been so long, I don't think we're seeing any of that. I think Nintendo has decided to leave those behind and focus on new projects. So with that being said, what do you guys think are some of the big things we're going to see from E3 and Nintendo this year? Be sure to let me down below, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that button, hit the notification bell, so you never miss an upload. And with that being said, I have been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.